Welcome to RCV Clips, short recordings and interviews designed to introduce listeners to helpful tools and brief explanations about ranked choice voting and how this voting method works. These clips are produced by the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center, a compilation of best practices and first-hand experiences from jurisdictions that have used ranked choice voting, also known as RCV. The website, www.rankedchoicevoting.org, and the overall project serve as resources for election administrators, voters, policymakers, candidates, and for anyone who wants to learn more about ranked choice voting. We are not advocacy focused. Rather, we aim to provide resources that allow jurisdictions to implement RCV effectively and efficiently. The RCV Resource Center team is comprised of former election administrators who have conducted statewide, municipal, and district RCV elections. Welcome to our RCV Clips episode for July 2018. I'm Karen Brinson Bell, Election Administration Consultant with the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center. Today I'll be talking with Kathy Monteo, City Clerk and Registrar of Voters for Lewiston, Maine. We've asked Kathy to share her experience helping conduct the first statewide primary in the U.S. using Ranked Choice Voting, or RCV. Hi, Kathy, and thank you for joining me today for this podcast, and congratulations on a successful primary. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just dive right in with our questions, and I'll build up so that our listeners have a little understanding. Uh, You could say that the path to using RCV as a voting method for Maine's June primary took many turns and detours along (laughs) the way. Uh, The Secretary of State's office, I know, took the lead in implementation decisions, but the local clerks still had considerable work and preparations to do to be ready to deliver an election. Talk with us a little bit about some of the steps you took in Lewiston and how the moving target of whether there would actually be an RCV election and whether it would be used or not affected things at the local level. Sure. And as you already noted and highlighted, there were a lot of changes leading up to the June 12th primary election date for Maine. Um, Even a a few short months before Election Day, we did not know how the votes would be tabulated because of all the lawsuits and the legislative changes. We didn't know if it would be a traditional vote method or a ranked choice voting method. So what municipal clerks did was we just proceeded accordingly because we knew that we were going to have to run and administer a state election on June 12th regardless of how the votes would be tallied. So we were busy doing our regular election preparation lining up our citizen election workers and poll workers, securing the buildings for polling place locations, having the voting machines programmed, and so forth. So a lot of it, as far as the advanced prep, didn't really impact municipal clerks a lot. As you noted, in Maine, the Secretary of State's office prepares all of the materials for the municipal level. Municipal clerks administer the state election on a local level, but all of the material is prepared by the Secretary of State's office. So those are really the folks who were really, um, unfortunately, under the deadline and needing to wait for all those changes and law court decisions to be made before they can do their final preparation of their forms and paperwork and then get it out to each individual town to implement on our level. So in talking about the preparations, you, you outline many of the things that go into any election. Were there differences in in how you had to administer an, a ranked choice voting election, or were they similar? Sure. Uh, there were a lot of similarities. We used the, the towns that use voting machines in Maine were able to use the same voting machine, and towns that vote by paper ballot in Maine were still able to vote by paper ballot. So it, there weren't changes in that sense for their voters. There were some changes administratively for municipalities, especially if they use a voting machine because of the way the state ballot had to be tabulated for ranked choice voting, towns were not able to use the same voting machine and have their, their town ballot, their municipal ballot, be processed by that same voting machine. So uh, any town that had a town election on June 12th needed to rent or lease additional voting machines to accommodate their municipal ballot on the same day on June 12th because the state of Maine ballots could only go into the state voting machine because of the way it was programmed to tally the ranked choice voting elections. So that was an additional uh, expense for communities 
who needed to rent machines if they had a local election that same day. Do you have any sense of whether that, if as RCV continues in Maine or or if there's still a, a little bit of questions at times, mm, right. but uh, it looks like it's going to continue based on the referenda and so forth. Um, do you, will those procedures continue or are there is there some sense that that may not be a requirement to have that additional equipment going forward? Right. I, I don't believe that municipal clerks, we, if, that we know that yet. We're still waiting to hear from the Secretary of State's office on that. I'm not sure if part of it was just because it was the first time being implemented in June 12th that they wanted to have separate machines, but I believe it's our understanding that they will always have to be separate machines because of the way they're being tallied, but we're not 100% sure on that yet. Gotcha. Well, we know from from working with different jurisdictions that voter education becomes a a big part of of implementing this voting method. Could you talk with us a little bit about the the efforts that Lewiston made to educate voters, what you did from your office before the primary and even as they arrived at the polls? Sure, absolutely. That was probably the largest change for municipal clerks in leading up to the June 12th election as far as our standard preparation work is in Lewiston, we sat down and we put together a communication plan to educate the voters because we knew it was going to be confusing for voters to go from the traditional voting method of only voting for one candidate to being able to have the opportunity and option to rank their candidates if they were so interested. So we sat down and we said, uh, how are we going to reach the most amount of voters as possible? We know that Some of the elderly residents still receive their information via TV news and the printed newspaper. Younger residents receive their information via social media and other forms of outreach. So we sat down and we tried to create a plan to try to get the information out to all of our voters. So uh, in uh, Lewiston on May 8th, we had a school budget election. It was a citywide election. So I was at the polls all day greeting voters. We had an informational booth explaining ranked choice voting. And so we had handouts and materials there. So I was able to talk to hundreds of voters and explain the process to them. We also did a little segment during our city council meeting explaining ranked choice voting. And we actually created a sample ballot. And to keep the politics out of it, we created a ballot where people would vote on the, their favorite ice cream flavor and what should the official ice cream flavor for the city of Lewiston be. And so we created a 15-minute video clip and put that on YouTube, just showing people how to vote. Uh, we also reached out via our website and our social media, our Facebook and our Twitter accounts. And we also had informational kiosks, both at our public library and our city hall. We also had some information on our local community access cable TV station. So we really tried to spread the word out as much as possible. I also went to our local senior citizens monthly luncheon event and explained ranked choice voting for their members up there as well. So we really tried to do a lot of outreach. That's probably where most of our time was spent the month or two leading up to the June 12th election for us. Those sound like very similar things that we've learned other jurisdictions have done. And, and even in my experience, I also implemented ranked choice voting in a, a community that had a, a, a pretty large senior population. So the, mm-hmm. interesting to see the comparison there. It, that does mean that you were interacting with voters quite a bit. Mm-hmm. What were you hearing there at the ground level about their thoughts on, on ranked choice voting and, and either before or after or throughout the whole thing? Sure. Um, A lot of folks, the number one question we received from a lot of folks was, if I only vote for one candidate, will my vote still count? And of course, the answer is absolutely yes. So we wanted to reassure them that they were able to vote for as few or as many candidates as far as the ranking of the candidates that they wanted to, and it would still work. So the number one question was, is it okay if I just vote for one rank one and will it still count? And the answer is absolutely. The other question was, do I have to rank every single candidate uh, in the races that have the ranked choice voting or could I only rank maybe my favorite, my top two or three and will that still count? And the answer was yes. Uh, A lot of folks seemed to, it was almost like uh, the fear of the unknown or the anxiety of the unknown. Once we explained it to folks and they saw the sample ballot, they said, oh, that's not as bad as I thought. 
uh, seemed to be the reaction from a lot of folks. So they really just had to see it and learn about it. And after a couple of minutes, they said, oh, well, this makes perfect sense and I understand it. And again, they just wanted to know what options they had. Could they vote for everyone or would they have to vote for everyone or just a few? And once they knew that they could vote for just a few, they seemed to be pleased with it. Uh, certainly some folks were still confused by it. Uh, other folks basically are probably tr more traditionalists and just didn't care for it, and that was certainly their choice. The other, I think, uh, confusing part for the voters is that it didn't apply to every single race on our ballots, because of course it's only if there are three or more candidates in a particular race you would be ranking them. So in the primary, we had some races, particularly the gubernatorial races for both the Democratic side and the Republican side, had more than three candidates running. So those were done by ranked choice voting, but the other ones may have only, uh, the other races on the ballots maybe only had one or two candidates running, so you wouldn't be ranking those. So it did seem confusing for voters to be able to rank some races, but not all races on their ballot. Any other takeaways of best practices or experiences that you could offer to jurisdictions who are on the verge of administering RCV for the first time, or or even if they've if they've had the experience but are looking at ways to improve their processes. Right, I think it, I would just recommend doing a communication plan and sitting down to plan how you're going to educate your voters and all the wide range of voters that you have in your community. As we noted, the younger folks, the senior citizens, uh, we are actually gearing up to do that again because in November we will also have ranked choice voting on our November ballot and November of course being a general election. So Maine has a closed primary, we're a closed primary state, so in order to have voted in our June 12th primary you would have needed to have been enrolled in the Democratic Party or enrolled in the Republican Party. And if you are not enrolled in a party, if you're a registered voter but not affiliated with a political party, you were not able to vote a candidate ballot last month. However, in the November election, you will be able to. So we are anticipating having thousands of additional voters in November who will be voting this method for the first time because they weren't eligible to participate in the June election. So we're planning to gear up all of our communication and outreach again. So that would be my number one recommendation to other communities is just to make sure that you have a really great communication plan and you cover the full uh, spectrum of your voters in, in different platforms, social media, print media, and so forth. I think those are very wise words. It did make me think, was there anything you did differently in terms of your poll worker training? We did. Well, we educated the, the workers about uh, the process because we knew that they would be on the front lines. We have seven different wards in Lewiston, so seven different polling places. So we knew that our citizen poll workers would be on the front lines answering questions from the voters. So we provided additional training uh, for them as well just to make sure that they were familiar with the process as well. And we just were very careful in trying to keep the politics out of all the explanation and just keep it to the pure mechanics and logistics of the ballot. Kathy, thank you so much for doing this uh, podcast today. It really just underscores the effort that we're trying to make here at the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center to give perspective and best resources that we can to election administrators and policymakers and being able to talk with someone who's just gone through the process of implementing and have been right there um, face to face with the voters is just really a helpful resource and we certainly appreciate you doing this today. Fantastic, my pleasure. Thank you. And for those who want to know more about Maine's ranked choice voting process, we're excited to announce that next Thursday, August the 2nd, 2018, we will actually have a webinar presented by Secretary of State Matt Dunlap at 1 p.m. Eastern Time to give his firsthand perspective of how the process went in Maine. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for joining us today for our July RCV clip. The resources Kathy mentioned are available in the notes section of this episode. We'd also like to take a moment to thank Morgan Chance as she completes her fellowship with the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center. Morgan's dedication and hard work have been instrumental in the launch and production of this podcast series. The elections administration profession is fortunate to have her as part of their ranks. 
This is a monthly segment produced by the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you get podcasts. Please take some time to rate and review the podcast. Our theme music is Flutterbee by Poddington Bear. Until next time, I'm Karen Brinson Bell on behalf of my colleagues Morgan Chance, Chris Hughes, and the rest of the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center.